we you're joining the latest and greatest series for ability tools. This session is going to be recorded and we have some accessibility features to review with you all. So what, let me go ahead and get started with that. So again, this is the latest and greatest series for ability tools. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for attending. So here we showcase exciting and innovative AT devices and services. Shortly, we're gonna welcome our special guest, Leanna Genovese, hopefully I'm saying that right, CEO and founder of Imaginable Solutions and creator of Guided Hands. And if this is your first time, welcome everyone. We're so happy to have you. Let me go ahead and go over some quick accessibility features. Give me one moment. So first, my name is Michelle Rosado. I am one of the Ability Tools coordinators here at Ability Tools and CFILC. And uh, for audio description purposes, I'm a middle-aged Latina woman with fair skin and curly red hair. I'm wearing glasses and a black and white top and gold hoop earrings. Uh, next slide. So let's go ahead and quickly review our accessibility options available for today's meeting. I wanted to call these out because we have a little extra today, which I'm excited to share. So please note, we've enabled both the Q&A and the chat. We've also enabled closed captioning and Spanish interpretation. Each of these menus are located at the bottom of your screen under the meeting controls and may appear slightly different than the example I've displayed here. Next slide. If you'd like to access closed captions, you can do so by going to the meeting controls found at the bottom of your screen and select the CC icon, which is listed here, and you'll have the ability to enable captions. You may also move the text box to wherever you like on your screen for more convenience. Additionally, you can also have the ability to use the stream text links, which I've dropped in the chat, and we will drop it continuously throughout the presentation. Um, here, you'll be able to change the font size, font color, and make captioning full screen. Next slide. You also have the ability today to manage language interpretation. You can click the interpretation icon identified by a little circle with grid lines on your menu bar. And then once you select that, you should be able to select additional languages. Here you can listen in Spanish. And last but not least, uh, we do encourage questions. So next slide. So this meeting is intended for you to gain knowledge about the products and services showcased today. So we'll answer questions at the end of the presentation. You're welcome to utilize the Q&A. Um, whenever possible, but you're also open to use the chat and also use the raise hand feature at the bottom and we can unmute you if you needed to speak. But please share, uh, wait for the questions till the end and we'll have a chance to allow Leanna to go through everything. So with no further ado, thank you so much for uh, joining us and I'll go ahead and hand that over to Leanna. Awesome, thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here with you all today. I'm calling in from Hamilton, Ontario in Canada. Um, I'm wearing a blue shirt. I have crazy curly hair and I'm going to be sharing my screen soon to share with you all um, our innovation called Guided Hands. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and then talk a little bit about our origin story with the devices. And then I'm going to be doing a live demo. So if someone can let me know if you can see my screen okay. Yes, you can awesome. see Awesome. Okay, wonderful. So again, hi everyone. My name is Leanna Genovese. I'm the CEO and founder of Imaginable Solutions. We create assistive technology to improve the quality of life for people with limited hand mobility. So this is a sneak peek of our guided hands. It's an assistive device that enables people with limited hand mobility to write, paint, draw, and access technology through touchscreen devices and keyboards. 
So again, this is a sneak peek. I'll be doing a full demo right after this. So where did this all begin? I am the creator of God at Hands, and I originally created it for my friend Alyssa with Historical Policy. My background is in biomedical engineering, and I met her during my first year of engineering, and I spoke with her and she mentioned that she loved painting, but as her condition progressed, she wasn't able to hold on to a paintbrush anymore because she had spasticity and hand and arm weakness. So I wanted to create her something that gave her back her ability to do what she loves. So the first prototype was made out of pipe cleaner straws and a sponge, and I incorporated Alyssa throughout the entire design process, really listening to her needs and making sure that what I created was accessible for her. And that's when I created Guided Hands. And after I saw Alyssa paint, I knew I had to help others like her. So I continued my now passion project. That's when I met Bella, a little girl with cerebral palsy. She used Guided Hands at our local children's hospital. And as soon as she painted, the widest smile spread across her face. She turned to her mom and said, mom, I want one. And the mom turned to me and asked, how much is it? And at that point, the thought of even selling this device never crossed my mind. But in that moment, I realized that I created something that could impact someone's life. So a week later, I incorporated imaginable solutions. And fast forward to today, we have been operating and running for five years. So after meeting Alyssa and Bella, I was determined to see how many other people I could help. And that's when I quickly realized that there's millions of people in just North America who have a medical condition or injury that impairs their hand mobility. And I'm sure the individuals on this call can tell me about more conditions and individuals who could benefit from guided hands, but we're learning from you. Got It Hands has been used across the world, specifically 18 countries and counting. Uh, before we launched the product to market, we introduced it to over 975 health professionals, occupational therapists, speech language pathologists, physical therapists, and people with disabilities to make sure that, again, our device was accessible and met the needs of many users. And this is just a snapshot of the impact that we're making. On the left is Mila. She's using guided hands during her occupational therapy to draw for the first time. In the center is Jeff. He also has cerebral palsy and he's nonverbal. And he's using the device to spell out words and communicate with us, which is really important because he's nonverbal. And on the right is Annabelle. She has arthritis and she's using the device to play a game of solitaire on the iPad and keep her brain stimulated while uh, using it during her recreational programming at her nursing home. So how Guided Hands works, and you'll, you'll see it when I do the demo, but Guided Hands utilizes the gross motor skills in the shoulder rather than using the limited fine motor skills in the hand. So we're really promoting shoulder engagement unlike other solutions that are out there. Uh, God of Hands is international award winning. It's been my honor to travel across the world to speak about disability innovation and accessibility and be able to be a voice for those in our community. And our mission at the end of the day is to make the world more accessible one God at Hands at a time. And it's really wonderful to be able to share that oops, with all of you because you know, we've had so many families, especially in California, we actually attended the uh, Abilities Expo in Los Angeles in March, and we had so many families and health professionals and teachers after reach out to us and say, you know, can we trial the device? And that's why we're, we're hoping to get guided hands into a bunch of lending libraries in California, a bunch of schools where students are able to try it out. And if they want to purchase, they can do so directly on our website. We are currently the only manufacturers and sellers of guided hands. So if you get in contact with us, you're in the right hands and we'll be able to introduce it to you and your team. So again, we're just looking forward to introducing the device to centers like yours so that families and individuals the community can have a have a chance to try it out before they make that purchase if they wish. And our team is always happy to jump on a one on one virtual call with families to kind of go through if they are a good fit for guided hands. 
So we do have uh, an instructional video that is out there, so you can share it with your healthcare team. Um, I believe these slides are being shared, so you'll have access to all the links, and I can also send them in the chat. And we also have an adaptations video. So this is showcasing different ways to adapt to guided hands for various mobility levels and different applications like light boards for individuals with visual impairments, um, using a wrist weight slant boards. I'll be doing that actually right after this. And uh, we encourage you to join our Guided Hands community. So you can use the QR code there to join our Instagram community, which is a lot of fun, and our Facebook because we share all of the smiling faces and different applications that occupational therapists use for Guided Hands. And it's a really great way to show families who might be interested in the device, other children and adults, so that they can kind of base whether the device might work for their loved one on seeing other individuals with disabilities. So it's, um, and we also do giveaways and all of that fun stuff. So we definitely urge you to, to scan it while it's up. And I can also pop it in the chat. So I am going to stop sharing my screen and spotlight myself so that you can see me on the big screen and then also the guided hands. All right. And yes, yeah, sorry, I was going fast. You will have the presentation afterwards. Um, awesome. Okay. So I hope I'm nice and big for everyone. I am going to tilt my screen and show you Godded Hands. All right. So I'll try to go slower for this. So everything in white is 3D printed. So you can wipe it down with any sort of white Lysol wipe or disinfectant. We have four different hand pieces. These are tailored to different sizes and hand impairments that an individual may have. So this hand piece is really great uh, for people who have weaker hands and they can just hold on to the hand piece like this. But then for people who have more spasticity in their hand, their fingers just curl right around here. Now, all of these hand pieces are ambidextrous. They have a hole on one end and a hole on the other just like these ones too. Now this is our utensil holder. Now this fits into the hole of our hand piece. So I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna twist this into the left hole here. Again, it's ambidextrous, so if I was left-handed, I'm gonna twist this into the opposite side. So I'm actually gonna start off with this hand piece and I'll come back to the other ones. So I'm going to twist this into place. And I'll set these ones aside. Now, all of these pieces, they actually have a dovetail end right here. And that fits into our slot right here. So that just fits in like a puzzle piece. So now this is all one unit. So this is what makes all the hand pieces interchangeable if you have different clients of, again, different hand sizes and levels of mobility. We have a nice wrist strap. So the first thing I'll do is I will demonstrate just for visibility reasons, I'll demonstrate a red marker on a white paper. So I feed this marker through our utensil holder and I'll just kind of bend it so you can see, bend it this way. So the thinnest size this can accommodate is a thin paintbrush or marker and the larger size is a thicker marker. I consider this a thin marker. So I place the utensil through the hole and hold it in place about midway using the thumb screw. And it's connected to a blue arm on the hand piece, which is flexible. So I can adjust this so I can have a clear line of vision of where my marker and paper are gonna be. So I'm just gonna grab some paper. And usually what I do with paper, I get a binder clip and I clip it on. And you'll notice that I'm clipping the paper onto the left hand side because I'm right handed. And this will make sure that I'm able to hit all corners of the page. So I'm going to be grasping the hand piece. I can put my wrist strap on. Depending on the individual's level of mobility, this might be a quick setup that the occupational therapist or the caregiver may have to do. But once you're in there, you can move around. Again, I'm using my shoulder to move around. And I'm going to start off with writing my name. I find that cursive writing is very easy. The system allows for really fluid and smooth movements. 
And I can draw things like a circle. I'll make this a happy face. Um, I can draw figure eight, squiggly lines. It's very, very easy to move around. So I'll show you this so you can have a better view. And now if I wanted to swap out this marker for a paintbrush, a stylus pen for other applications, I'll just take it out like this. I will put a paintbrush going through, again, tightening that thumb screw right in the middle of the paintbrush. And I'm going to take this off. And this was a painting that I was working on beforehand. And I'm just gonna put this here to mimic what you could do with painting. Um, and I apologize, I don't have my paint palette in front of me. But what you would do is you could dip into your paint, into your painting and dip into the water to swap the color and continue the painting. So with painting, the bristles move quite easily, so it's it's really easy to, to move around. Sometimes for larger canvases, people kind of push it through and again be able to hit all areas of the of the canvas. And you have lots of degrees of freedom with the device as well. So that is our painting application. The next application, which is my favorite, is the iPad. The iPad or really any touch screen device. So again, I place that iPad in the top left corner. I'm going to remove the paintbrush and place a stylus pen. And I'm able to move around the iPad with ease. So there are so many different applications on the iPad. Great for young kids, um, associating numbers and colors using the app Happy Color. Um, there's a lot of communication apps and AEC on here. Um, lots of different things. Um, again, we... Um, uh, again, I'm putting that in the left-hand side so that I can reach all areas of the iPad. And uh, we had Annabelle who played Solitaire on here. Um, again, I mentioned the communication apps, even just being able to go on YouTube, use the, sorry, I can't play Solitaire and talk at the same time. So that's Solitaire. Um, we've seen lots of different people use the iPad to type, browse the internet, And now this is where I'll kind of switch my presentation into showing you the adaptations. So if I had a client who had maybe more spasticity in their hand, I'm going to give this a wiggle off. And I'm going to remove the utensil arm and place it in a different hand piece. Since I'm right-handed, I'm putting this on the left side. And I'm going to twist it in place until it's snug. And again, since it has that dovetail, I'm placing it right inside here. Now my hand is able to wrap around. I can put my thumb around here, thumb here, or I've seen some people do a three finger grip as well. This feels comfortable for me. I can manipulate this so I can see where I'm going. And again, I can use the iPad like this. Now, right now, and as I mentioned so many times, we're utilizing the gross motor skills in our shoulder to move around rather than the fine motor skills in the hand. So the individual will have to be able to extend the elbow and move it a little bit. 
Now, for in the youngest person who's used cutted hands, she was 18 months. She had cerebral palsy. And the oldest individual who has used guided hands was 97 years old. She had dementia. So I like to show the device being used on a slant board. I'll position my body like this so you can see it because I'm able to rest my elbow because before my elbow was kind of hovering. I'm able to rest my elbow again, bend this in place while moving. And again, relax the elbows so I can give my shoulder a little bit of a break. And this is also great for individuals who have visual impairments as well. Now, for individuals who have spastic movements, they might make this movement. Very loud and could possibly damage these pieces, yet they're, they're pretty sturdy but you might want to limit their range of motion. What I do for those clients is I get a pool noodle, I cut in the pool noodle, and I place that around the rod. Then I can do that on either sides. So that way, when I'm using the device, I'm limited to a certain range of motion. So I'm not going all the way up. And of course, you know, you can put them back here, whatever range of motion or space you want them to work in. So you can really customize it to the rehabilitation program that you're doing as well. Now we've seen some people elbow drop and now they're stuck here. You can manipulate the blue arm to be able to make contact with the iPad. Or what I like to do is add a pool noodle. This is a little pool noodle. And what I do is I use duct tape. This is not the strongest tape, but it will demonstrate the idea. I will get a piece of the tape and attach this blue piece to the bottom here. So that way, when I want to use the iPad, and if I want to drop my elbow, it's still keeping me in a neutral flat position so that I can make contact with the iPad. So this is also great for people who want to rest their elbow because it kind of holds your elbow into place, giving you a little bit more support up the forearm. Now, similarly, now if you can see if I press down, this blue arm bends out of place. And that's not too ideal for individuals who have a lot of um, spastic movements. Oops, <laughs> when I was doing this, um, this popped up. I'm glad that this happened so I can show you that this means that it didn't break. These are lock line pieces. I'm sure maybe you've used these in the rehabilitation center, but I'm just going to apply some force here. And that just pops back in. So if this ever happens, you, you didn't break it. All right, where was I? Yes. So I'm going to take the pool noodle off and I am actually going to place it underneath the hand piece. So I'm gonna place it underneath the hand piece. And that way, if I wanted to press downwards, the arm is still being able to move and you don't hurt your fingers as well, scraping it on the board. So placing the pool noodle back here, if they're elbow dropping and in the front, if they have, if they're applying a lot of pressure downwards. Now, another thing I like to do or recommend, and I'm going to take this piece off, is some individuals, their hands will, will come off. They'll kind of lift them up. So I saw a little girl use a scrunchie to hold her fingers in place. So I'll just put the scrunchie right above my knuckles 
And that just kind of, I'll flex my arm like this so you can see it, scrunchy kind of above the knuckles and then our wrist strap holds the hand well into place. And really when you're using guided hands, you don't even need your hand to move around. We've actually had um, some individuals who were amputated um, right over here and they were able to use guided hands because again, it's using the shoulder. So I don't even need to use my hand to, to move around. And we've had a few people, and I wonder if it's already been populated in the chat, uh, about resistance for guided hands. So we have seen, so guided hands is used um, in at Napa, they're a world-renowned children's therapy center. And um, what they did was they just added an elastic band to the stand in here so that when you go up, it had some resistance going up. So this is really great. Again, if you wanna build shoulder muscle, if you want to slow down the movements a little bit, we are actually in the middle of creating uh, a new premium version of guided hands that has adjustable resistance in the sliding system. So we always listen our, to our community about ways that we can make it more accessible and adaptable. And the last thing I wanna show you <laughs> Because we've seen guided hands being used as an arm sliding system. So I had a young boy who had autism and his mother told me that he had some motor skills in his fingers, but he wanted to get away from the hand over hand support. Naturally, guided hands is focused on independence and getting away from hand over hand to give the client more independence. You can kind of set them up and let them do their thing. Now this boy put his hand like this and his wrist was hovering downwards and he was able to isolate his finger and I've seen some people also put a splint here and use guided hands like this. Be able to move around. I don't know, right now we're, we're looking at Lego sets apparently, <laughs> um, but they're able to move around like this with their finger. And we've also seen some individuals, um, this is a, like a bingo dabber. See some individuals, especially students in schools, sometimes they, again, just need that, the removing that hand over hand support and they're able to to use it as well. Again, just as an arm sliding system. And now this bingo dabber also fits inside here. So lots of cool things that you can stick in here. You can stick in a bingo dabber. And I'll just show you to show you the size. So we can stick this guy in here. And just squeeze him in. He's just got to wiggle in a little bit. I would say this is probably the max size for this guy. You know what? Probably just nearing it. The new version is going to have a, a larger hole. That's definitely what we've been hearing from the community. But anyway, so you can see that it's making its way through. And, uh, and you can also put um, crayons in here as well. Sometimes they break as crayons do, but we've seen lots of people do coloring with crayons. And we also provide, with every God of Hands, we provide a worksheet package. So this worksheet package is to help familiarize the individual with how to use guided hands. Because again, it's very different when you're writing from the shoulder and not the hand. So this is a little bit about who we are. Scan the barcode to the instructional video. And now it's gonna take you through some different activities to practice that range of motion. So this is starting off with more focus on the gross motor skill. Free space to draw. And then getting down to the fine motor skills. So practicing some letter tracing. Copying the picture, getting right down to the finer details of drawing. And some more searches and mazes for fun as well. And every season or fun time of the year, we, um, in our newsletter, we provide worksheet packages 
So this was, we actually just sent our newsletter out today. This was our summer worksheet package with God at Hand. So I think someone actually colored this, but um, just some pictures for kids to color. Um, and we have uh, connect the dots, letter tracing, different activities for different age groups, some Mandela things for adults as well too. Um, and you can put highlighters in there, lots of different things. But I think I will pause there and uh, maybe just put my camera back up and ask if there are any questions that kind of came up while I was doing my demo. And while I'm doing that, I am just going to hit enter and put our website, which is www.imaginalsolutions.com and our email, which is info at imaginalsolutions.com, just in case I miss any questions. Perfect. I'm jumping in um, to read some of the questions you have in the chat. You have a few. So let's start with, uh, I'm just going to start at the top here. It looks like Aaron asked, is there a branch possibly in Washington State? So maybe a vendor or somebody in Washington state for that sells guided hands? So we are the only company that sells guided hands so far. Um, we are happy to go through vendor processes. We've, we've done that for a few states. Um, we just would love your support in telling us how to go through that because we are Canadian. So it's, it's fairly new for us to go through the process, but happy to do so. But I believe we've had a couple schools, hospitals, if not maybe a few assistive tech centers who have purchased from uh, from that state. I'd have to just check our, our data sheets. Perfect. And I'm going to keep going. And if anybody wants to uh, unmute themselves to ask, you can also raise your hand, but I'm going to go through the chat right now. Um, okay. And then can you eat with guided hands? Have you heard of anybody using it for that? <laughs> so so I, I can do my best to demonstrate, but... I have had a man who had, I think it was multiple sclerosis. He put a, a spoon in here and he more so used it as um, a way to ergonomically hold his, his spoon. So he put a spoon in here and then he, he ate it like this. However, now we don't, I don't really recommend it, but you could put a fork in here and at least um, like, stab the food but the tricky thing is is that if you tilt my screen here if you put it down here and then you come up you'd have to have the mobility to come up because right now there's no way to bring it up to your face um so you'd have to kind of come up and bite it if you were to to get it with a fork um in terms of cutting we don't really recommend that you put anything sharp in here but it's up to your discretion hopefully you have someone there to to make sure nothing bad happens. Um, but yeah, we've definitely, some people just take it off. And um, oh, and it's awesome to see that um, someone in the chat from Missouri Tech Act Project has has two of our guided hands. So thanks for being on the call. Um, and they like them, so that's good. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> um, one of the questions was, do you know if it's covered by medical insurance yet? right now or have you heard of anybody been able to get it covered through insurance? yeah so oh my goodness I think it was there was one U.S. state there was a family who actually got Medicaid um they went through a DME vendor and okay. they got guided hands covered and they used the miscellaneous medical device code don't quote me but I think like it was waiver like a waiver for it possibly yeah it was E1399 that was the miscellaneous DME code that was used to get coverage for guided hands. Now I want to say, I forget what state that was. Um, it's, it's escaped my brain, okay, but um, okay. we we've can... only had one family so far who told us, and we're super eager to work with the community and other families to figure out if if it if it can be covered in other states. So happy to write letters of support, you know, helping occupational therapists through that process. Um, but uh, we have had luck so That's far. Great. So. That's great to know. Okay. Um, let's see. I noticed you mentioned on the guides, um, kind of like little training almost. Are there also training or sample videos that they can go through on your website to kind of 
um, once they purchase one or is there something like that available for them? Everything that I showed you, we have professional videos covering everything that I showed you. And they're on our website. If you go on our website, on the tab Guided Hands, and even on the purchase page, um, there are two videos, instructional video, how to set it up, how to get started, and then the adaptation. So showing you the pool noodles. You know, we've had people, and I forgot to mention it, we've had people put a light board underneath um, for people with visual impairments. We've also had individuals use electrical stimulation on the hand to open it up to hold the hand piece and to help straighten up the arm. So lots of different adaptations and those videos are all on our website. Excellent, excellent. And if, let's say there's a piece that's broken or misplaced or lost, do you sell any of the individual pieces by themselves? Yep, so we do have uh, a warranty on the product, more so related for any manufacturing defects. Um, but if anything gets lost or broken, um, we can send out the good thing about our design is that all the little pieces can easily be replaced. You don't have to buy a whole new one. We ship you an Allen key and the piece, and we're happy to jump on a call and kind of walk you through how to replace it. Gotcha. And then uh, next question was, what's the current price point right now if we're not talking about insurance on the website? Yep, so it's $629 USD. Okay, perfect. And I have one that might be a little more in depth. I don't know if you can answer fully, but we do have a fellow inventor on, Aaron, I think also in Washington. Um, he says here, I'm an inventor and I wanted to know how did you go about getting people to test this product before hitting market? And then did you speak with the hospitals? And how did you get clinical trials? So I know that might be a little in-depth. We can touch on it and maybe we can connect you with Aaron a little later, but maybe just to kind of give an overall uh, what your experience was would be nice to hear. Yeah, for sure. So we did all the product development during COVID. So we actually manufactured 50 guided hands and then shipped them off to different schools, hospitals, and individuals with disabilities to, first of all, just trial the functionality and ensure that it was accessible. And in doing so and getting product feedback, we also got interest from those organizations sharing, you know, I have X client and Y client, and I think they could really benefit from it. So it was really great to get the product out there into the community as soon as possible and, and get that product feedback. And then people wanted to ad uh, adopt it into their, their rehabilitation programs and in homes. So it was, it was really awesome to connect with the community um, even during virtual times. Actually, COVID made it easier to connect virtually because everyone was on Zoom. So we were even connecting with people from like Australia and England and getting product oh, feedback wow. from them as well. So again, got it. Oh, I think I mentioned it, but God enhances in 18 countries. So it's made it very easy to uh, connect okay. with other health professionals. And honestly, I can't take credit for all the adaptations that I just showed you. These are from occupational therapists across the world that have sent to me. Oh, Lee oh we lost your sound. Oh, really? Hold on. Maybe the connection. Go ahead again. Maybe it was just the internet connection. Um, I was oh perfect. I think in the chat they can hear me. I was just mentioning that um, we've been able to get feedback from again all all people from across the world and and they've been giving us um, feedback on uh, how to adopt the device for different clients. Excellent. Uh, let's see. So I think it's my internet connection that's a little wonky. So forgive me if you hear every other word. Just somebody chime in the chat. But you have a lot of questions in here. So I'm going to try to get through what I can for you, uh, Liana, but I know that we probably won't get to everything, um, but you're welcome to jump on her websites. Also link up. I know we have the Instagram and the Facebook. We have her email. You guys are going to get this information as well, but let's try to get as much as we can uh, before the three o'clock mark. So if you don't mind, I'm going to keep going while we have a connection. Okay, um, th this is a good one. How much does a device weigh and is it easily transportable? So, sorry, I'm Canadian, it's three pounds. Um, and we give you a bag. Okay. Well. So it comes with a bag, no extra fee. We just figure you guys got to transport it to client to client. <laughs> so we give you a bag and you can put all the hand pieces and stuff in there. 
Perfect. I know it's not on our website, but you do get a bag. <laughs> If we order now, will we get a new larger marker holder when it comes available? So if you order now, we can probably ship it next week, um, but we are hoping to, to make that version really soon and send us an email. If you're an assistive tech center, usually we want you guys to have the best version so that when you show it to your clients, they can really understand if it's for them or not. So just send us an email. We, If you're on our newsletter, you will be the first to know when we have that larger utensil holder. And um, and when we do, we're happy to, to ship that out. So just make sure that you're connected with us on our social media and our newsletter. You'll be the first to know that we have that. And then, yeah, we'll ship it out. Okay. And then we have a question from Joe here. Can you talk a little bit about product awareness and outreach that you've done with the OTs, the occupational therapists and other professionals? And then how have you made others aware of the ability to trowel or borrow the item? Um, and then let's see, purchase locally before they are able to purchase. So I think besides having the, the loaners available, right? Which is what we were trying to establish, kind of a connection. What have you guys been able to do so far and how have you been able to promote that uh, without that connection yet? Yeah, so we love speaking to communities like yourselves and in creating awareness about God at Hands. Um, we reach out to a lot of occupational therapists. We found that they are the ones that are right there side by side with these clients, speech language pathologists, physical therapists. So we do our best to reach out to them. Um, and we really rely on our social media as a way to create awareness about the product. And whenever we have families that ask us about trialing the product, if it's the right fit for them, usually the first thing we ask is what city and country are you from? And then we look at our database and we see if there are any local hospitals, schools, assistive technology centers that we can direct them to. If not, we are in, I want to say, 46 states. Um, but, uh, if not, or if it's not accessible for them to go to those locations, we do provide a virtual personal one-on-one -on -one demonstrations and calls like this, where I will kind of assess their mobility and then I'll show them the guided hands and we'll kind of go back and forth chatting about whether it's a good fit for them. Um, and, but that's why we really emphasize on having a guided hands in lending libraries and assistive technology centers so that families can, so that we can direct families to you guys. Yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have made that connection where some of the centers have already made those purchases for their centers, which we're excited, which means when somebody puts in a request, um, hopefully they can get their hands on one for a demo or they can go in and see if it's available for them to use as a short-term loaner to see if it's useful for them. So I'm sure it's kind of the trainer uh, requesting training at, at the beginning, kind of getting acclimated to it and how to use it. But yeah, that's actually something that uh, we, uh, the reason we, we brought you on because we want to make that more accessible for folks and learning more and more about the availability and how it could work. So. If you're interested, um, obviously, please jump onto uh, the website. We shared it again here under imaginablesolutions.com or email at info at imaginablesolutions.com, but also at the DLDCs, which are the Device Lending Demonstration Centers through Ability Tools. You should be able to look at the inventory soon and see some of those available later this year. So that's another exciting um, exciting access aspect of being able to get the word out there. So we'll have some in hand where we can kind of demo and play with. So we're so happy to have had you. I think I've gotten through most of the questions. This was an excellent presentation. Thank you so much, Leanna. For and if I can maybe just add one more thing. Sure. Um, so our price is 629 USD. And when we were launching the product market, we honestly did not know what price would be bearable for families. We, we don't know, uh, or we don't want the price to be another barrier for them. So we always urge families 
to reach out to us, we do have uh, an imaginable fund. Um, so with the, every sale of God at Hands on our website, we actually organize, we actually allocate a portion of the proceeds to gifting a God at Hands to families um, who might not be able to afford it. Um, so we have a list of those. We also have sponsors in our community that sometimes will sponsor a God at Hands for a family. So if you can't go through insurance, if there's no grants or anything, our team does look at grants as well and sometimes helps family, uh, help families find them. So just I urge you to just get them in contact with us, send them our email. And uh, our team does a really great job to, to take care of them and, and figure out a way to get it to them. That's wonderful. I'm so glad you said that. And I can always, if anybody misplaces any information, I can always make the connection as well and reach out and share but I'm going to drop this all again in the chat. This also, I don't know if everyone caught that, there is this um, sessions being recorded. The slide deck will be shared with everyone. Um, one, of the, um, one of the things we do have to do, though, is edit the video. So give us a few days at least to get that information out to you guys. But it is going to be shared with anyone who registered for today's session. And then you're welcome, you know, to share them with your networks as you please. Um, and then please, please, if you have any other questions um, for, for Leanna, now's the time. We almost have to let her go. Um, but we did want to make a couple of announcements while we have you. So we do have another Guided Hands scheduled for September 12th. So we're trying to do these bi-monthly. If you have folks that like Leanna that are working on something that is super interesting, you'd love to share, you'd love to see more, we do urge folks to please um, reach out to us and let us know. And we'd love to try to see if it would be a match and if we can work on getting them to present for us. Here's our information. If you do want to reach out and say, hey, this is one that we'd like to suggest, it's ability tools at cfilc.org. You can put latest and greatest suggestion under the header so that we know what you're what it's regarding and we'll try to reach out. Um, also, like I said, we have a save the date for September 12th coming up for the next guided hands. Um, the registration will be available shortly. All of you are welcome to join. We thank you so much again, Leanna, for your wonderful presentation. And we invite you to any of the other ones if you'd like to jump drop in and just take a peek. We, you're more than welcome. We can shoot you out information on these, but we're definitely signed up for um, your newsletter and we'd love to stay connected. Hopefully we'll be able to share more and we might see you again at the expo next year. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's wonderful to connect with amazing individuals who are creating such an impact in the community. So thank you for everyone same. for doing what you do. Same, same. Well, thank you. Um, we have, um, if you'd like, if it's okay, Erin, I think the best thing is if you can drop your email information here for Liana, I think that would be the easiest. And then um, you guys can connect after the call. And Liana, do you wanna put in um, the email? Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna share that just in case you don't have it on here, I'll go ahead and share it after the call too on, on your email and you guys can make a connection afterwards. Wonderful guys, thank you again. We're right at 2.50. I think as far as announcements are concerned, we have, um, I'm gonna drop some information about the trainings that are coming up, just so you can save it. I'll drop it in the chat. Just so you have it, these will be for the next session. So we have September 12th at 2 p.m. Um, special guests will include Mouthpad, which is a hands-free touchpad. We have their website here, x-ray glass, captioning glasses, and then Sammy Sleep Activity Monitor. So if anybody wants to take a sneak peek at their websites, go ahead and copy the, the links here. And then last one, I believe this one's going to be a tentative training. If anyone's wanting to join, please save the date for August 29th. Um, another one at 2 p.m., we have AT Solutions for Chronic Disease that's coming up too. So we'd love to see you guys. But again, that's what we've got going on here at Ability Tools. So thank you all for joining. And I can let you go a little bit early. I can see there's lots of smiles in the chat. 
this was a great presentation. I think everybody truly enjoyed it. So thank you again, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And we appreciate you guys coming in. Have a good one.